What's happening everybody, I'm fellow nerds working on Parzival96 and I am your host Parzival. And as you can tell from the title of the video and just the fun little cool little intro I did for you guys, it is the Halloween special. And as of what I'm going to tell you right now is going to be the list and how it's going to work. So it's going to be from number 10 to number 1 and it is going to be movies that I personally and preferously choose. Preferously? Take it, take it, take that out. That I prefer myself, my personal opinions, and what I think is the best movies from ten to one to watch during Halloween. Now you can add, you can take out, and you can add, or leave it the same. I don't care. It's up to you. It, at, by the end of the day, I'm just telling you a list of movies that I think is the best to watch either before to build up yourself to Halloween or to watch actually on Halloween. So. Whatever you do, it's up to you. And if, sorry, I'm going to actually have one of them. Uh, I'm going to use my list that I have on my phone. And um, one of them does have the full story to the movie on it. And that's just because I've only seen it once. And I hardly ever remember it because I was a kid in middle school. And I don't remember it. And that is actually going to be number 10. So, let me get to this. Do, do, do. Sorry about that. Probably should have went ahead and had it popped up while we were doing this. But I figured it'd be cool for you guys just to, to see me react. Okay, so number 10 is House of a Thousand Corpses. It came out in 2003. It's directed by Rob Zombie, and he actually stars in it as uh, the clown. And no, he's not the killer, but the way he acts sometimes, you think the motherfucker was. Sorry for the language. But it says, uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. An empty full tank and flat tire lead two couples down a terror-riddled road. To the House of a Thousand Corpses, House of a Thousand Corpses is a, um, hold on, lead two couples down a terror-riddled road to the House of a Thousand Corpses. House of a Thousand Corpses is at its core a story of family, a cast of twisted individuals who with each slash of a throat or stab through the chest add bodies to their sick human menagerie. So, yeah, as you can tell from the story of that alone, pretty out there and pretty gruesome. I don't remember all of the movie when I watched it, to be honest. Most of the stuff they say right there in the story, I'm just going to flat out say just, yeah, that's basically the gist of what it is. Two couples, they want to see stuff, and then one has an empty tank, and the other one has a flat tire. So it's like, nobody can win. It's like the biggest deal of life sucks moment you could possibly have. Or just... Karma just saying, fuck you, basically. That's that's just the way I feel about that moment. But other than that, yeah, the family and themselves that they, that he mentions that says it is a family story um, is about this twisted individuals. I believe two of them are married. Um, the other ones is just actually family members. One is one of the most well-known, apparently, because these couples just now first hear about the doctor, and apparently in this area, this doctor is like the biggest story for that town almost like it is for other serial killers in other parts like Jason is for Crystal Lake Mike Myers is for uh crap forget the place where he's from uh Freddy Krueger is for Elm Street just all kinds of stuff that's it's basically what he is for that area in the House of a Thousand Corpses so anyway back to continuing on our list and I will keep telling you most of the stories that I know of uh Jeepers Creepers number nine uh number nine Jeepers Creepers 2001 sorry I kind of flipped it around at first, so I needed to strike that and reverse it, but, um, Jeepers Creepers is a story of a creature from another world, and he's been here on Earth for a really, really long time, apparently since, like, the 1800s, maybe in the 1700s, because it was during the, because um, one body had, like, a wooden false teeth, and that was only during the time of George Washington, so 1700s, not even 1800s, um, so he's been here for that long, and uh, he goes to rest for 23 years, and when he wakes up, he goes back and he fades and builds up on all the humans. Now, for the humans, he takes parts of what he needs. So he'll do eyes, tongue, um, teeth if he has to, but he really doesn't need to with that. Arms, legs, um, inner uh, intestines, all the organs, whatever. If he needs it, he takes it. And if he doesn't, he just eats you. That's, that's just what it is right there. 
Um, great movie for the first one. Honestly, my personal opinion, I prefer the second one. And the third one's not that bad. If I had to rank the movies, it would go 2-1-3. And that's just me. I prefer the story with number two a little bit better. Yeah, I know. It's the whole bus thing and everything and all that. But it gave you another sense of edge. I mean, number one did give you a lot of edge. But at the same time, it just... It was just two people. When it comes to a group of people who can actually do things together but are stupid enough not to do things together to take down this thing, it's just hilarious. And then it's like, okay, so which one of these guys is going to go next? And that's why, to me, I think I like Jeepers Creepers 2 a lot better than Jeepers Creepers 1. But Jeepers Creepers 1 still holds a place in my heart because it has um, uh, Justin Long. I believe it's his name. Justin Long. He's the guy who in the, who in the, who in the end Jeepers Creepers 1 gets taken and then all that but you I, I've basically grown up with that just watching stuff with that guy and so, was, so that's kind of a throwback and what keeps me into it so anyway back to the list number eight the 2017 it now I am a big fan of the original it I have watched the original it with Tim Curry honestly when I was a kid it did scare me because I was just a kid and I never seen stuff like this and the fact that a demon cloud from another dimension could do this to me and bring out my worst fear was just terrifying and I didn't know what to do and then when I got older honestly didn't scare me no more it was just a laugh fest there was moments where you would just uh jump because he there was a couple of jump scares but not that many and that was the only time I actually ever probably was just like uh but not really scared it was just more of a laugh fest at that point and then I heard they were doing the re they were doing a two-part series remake for movies they're going to do a movie one and a movie two the first one was going to be about the young kids which i perfectly love you need to do the kids first and then do the adults because i think that's how the book goes too it goes from the kids and then it goes to the adults and it transitions in between and i'm not gonna lie i never read the book i want to read the book so that way i can compare worst to best or things that because to me the if I wanted to compare book to movie, I could do the original movie and book better because to me the newer movie there is pro I know there is some stuff that is wrong with that movie still compared to the people who love the book and read the book. I honestly love the 2017 it movie. I'm there was good scares there the Bill Skarsgård who plays Pennywise the dancing clown oh my god scares the shit out of me is playing him um, best version of Pennywise ever. If I wanted to go to a funny version of Pennywise with just with nostalgia feeling how much I love Tim Curry, uh, may he be okay with all the stuff he's had in the past. I hope he's been getting better and has been getting better from all the stuff he's had. He's an amazing actor, an amazing talent. He's one of the people who I inspire and just read and watch every day. So I really hope he starts getting better. If I wanted a funny version of Pennywise, just straight up funny, I'll go to Tim Curry. If I want one that's pretty funny with giving you the real factor of realness like I'm not real enough for you Georgie it's just like I'll go Bill Skarsgård because he made me laugh but he was more the terrifying Pennywise and I love it I'm not saying we need a combo of a Tim Curry and a Bill Skarsgård but I'm not gonna lie he did have moments where he really did laugh like the whole Georgie line like I'm not real enough for you this isn't real but it was real for Georgie but um it was just like ooh that was funny but you're poking at his heart, which he's supposed to be, because throughout the whole film, I believe it is Billy, is his name, who's the older brother to Georgie. He goes through the whole film just like, no, Georgie's not dead, and then if this thing is the thing that killed it, he ain't, it's not It's not real, he's just a figment of our imaginations, and he's just trying to scare us away from finding Georgie, and it's like, nope, he's the thing that ate Georgie, you're gonna die if you don't get your head in the game, man. But, I love it. I'm excited for next year. Uh, 2019 is when we're getting it part two, and we'll be seeing the grown-ups taking on Pennywise the Dancing Clown. But other than that, everybody, I'm not going to tell you a lot of the story or tell you the whole movie in the in this list. If you want to watch them and you, or if you want to read the full story of them, just search them up on the internet. You can find the best stories. Uh, you can pick out which ones is actually the correct one and which ones is the incorrect one. You just need to do your own research. I'm going to tell you what I've known from what I've watched when I've watched them and 
then you just decide from yourself if you want to see them or not, or if you have, and you feel like you want to pick it back up and read it and watch it again. Can't say read it again because we're not talking about books. <laughs> might do a book. I might do another uh, Halloween special though, where it's not movies, it's books, and I'll tell you what books are the scariest. Maybe that might be a thing I might do. But other than that, everybody, let's get to number seven. Number seven from *Dust Till Dawn*. Release year was 1996. So, uh, From This Till Dawn is a movie that's, that's... Most of the movies that's at the top now are going to be near and dear to my heart. I grew up with them. Uh, from Dust Till Dawn, I grew up since uh, sophomore year or freshman year in high school. I, I got it. I mean, I knew about it when I was younger, when I was in middle school and all that. But I never got a chance to actually find it and sit down and watch it. Because this movie is kind of hard to find. I was lucky enough to have it... Uh, oh, here it is. I was able to go to a local store here where I live. I'm not going to tell you where I live. Most of you are my personal friends who watch this do know where I live. But other than that, I found it on Blu-ray at a local store here. I was so happy. I wanted to get it. I didn't care if it was DVD or if it was Blu-ray, but I was like, you know what? I'll do Blu-ray. Best quality and might have some special features. I need to double check and see if there is any special features. Cause I'm a sucker for the behind the scenes and how they filmed and everything. Since I am wanting to be a filmmaker... But the uh, movie is um, 1996. It is set in the year 1996, um, even though it does kind of give you that classic vibe. Uh, it is directed by Robert Rodriguez and um, written and starring uh, Quentin Tarantino. Uh, one of Quentin Tarantino's first movies, actually, because that's his first screenplay that he's ever wrote, and it actually was produced into a movie, which is where Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino's buddy ship began, because, as everybody knows, they're a big part of Grindhouse. Uh, Quentin Tarantino's was Death Proof. Robert Rodriguez's was Planet Terror. And ever since then, they've just been duo. And even in one of the movie, in both the movies I have right here, both the Sin Cities, Quentin Tarantino is a guest director and helps out and also produces. So, and I think he also sort of writes as well too, possibly. But it is Frank Miller's movies, and they call it Frank Miller Sin City because they stay true to the lore and to the paper of writing of Sin City. It's not even on the list, and I'm already talking about it. Sorry about that. But anyway, good movies. But that this movie, From Dust Till Dawn, is where that buddy ship started, and it just led to a lot of great movies. And yes, this is Quentin Tarantino's first movie as far as writing and being in a movie. Now, his first directorial movie is after it, I'm just trying to remember which one it is, but 1996 is when his first movie came out, and that was from Dust Till Dawn. It is about two brothers, Richard and, um, Richie, or Richard, and, um, uh, Seth Greco. They're two robbers. One was in prison, the other one wasn't, and one breaks them out, and then they go on a robbing, they, they go, they go rob a bank, and then they go on a shooting and killing spree of people who come after him. Seth really doesn't like doing the killing, but if he has to, he will do it. He is not a baby about that. If he really doesn't want to kill you, he doesn't kill you, he lets you go. Richie, on the other hand, I would say he's like a... Uh, what is it? Bipolar psychopath? Because he just straights up just acts like he's going to not do anything, and then by the end of the thing, that when Seth comes back, People are just dead. So, yeah, it's it's just one of them things where it's like, yeah, I'm not going to kill anybody. And then Seth comes back. Mm, where's everybody? Over there. And you see them all dead. So it's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I killed everyone. It's So in that sense, it's like you, you need to pick your people right, Seth, even though it is his baby brother. But at the same time, it's like, mm, could have done something better with... A person you could do crime with but the movie is great the action violence is great um and then a lot of people don't when they hear from dust till dawn they don't think vampires but this is a vampire movie and that's why i love this movie so much it has the realism of real people and then it goes uh it's um set in a bar i think it's on the border or in mexico no it, it is in mexico and um it's called the titty twister I believe is what it's called. There's the bar that's open from dusk till dawn. And um, it's just a, a bar for truckers, bikers, and I think one other thing. And they are only able to get in because the guy who they got to sneak them across the border 
is in an RV and the RV the size that it is you have to have a trucking license in order to do that so um, movie is great um, I love it a lot uh, has George Clooney Quentin Tarantino um, the my, one of my favorite actors who's in um, Reservoir Dogs Pulp Fiction uh, a lot of other great movies you, you name it and he's probably been in it um, I'm trying to remember his name but so good um, Cheech Marin he's <laughs> he's like three characters in this film it's hilarious he's um, the border uh, agent who's mainly in Mexico he's hilarious um, you know, he's the guy who's supposed to meet Seth at the Titty Twister and he's the announcer and other bar worker at the Titty Twister so he plays three different characters and three of them each have different looks and it's just like Dude, why? <laughs> it's hilarious. And he just, he makes me laugh. I've always loved Cheech Marin from Cheech and Chong. Cheech and Chong just make me laugh my ass off. I only know them because my mom. And my mom is just the bomb. Probably everything that's on this list I've probably seen because of her or heard of because of her. And yeah, so I'm mean, just go see From Dust Till Dawn if you haven't seen it. If you have, for my friends who have, you, you know what I'm talking about. We'll probably have to sit down and all do just a big watch night or something. Because From Dust Till Dawn needs to be on a list of movies you need to watch for Halloween. So, took a lot of time with that one. Nine, number six, 1980s, Friday the 13th. That is right, Friday the 13th, the original. Um, stars Kevin Bacon and a couple of other people. The original story, the original killer, is not Jason. It is his mother. Uh, for Mrs. Thor Forhees, Voorhees, I believe is how you pronounce the last name. Something like that. It doesn't start off with Jason. Jason comes in in part two. You do see Jason in the end of this movie, but it's like a bad, uh, not a bad dream. She's actually pulled in the water when the cops are coming, and then they grab her and find her, and then she wakes up in the hospital, and there's like, he wasn't there, and that's when she's like, he's still in the water. So she gets the mom kill. so she kills the mom, finally finishes that off, and then she knows that Jason's still in the water, which leads us to Friday the 13th, part two. I haven't seen all the Friday the 13th movies. Pretty sad. Uh, if you want to see a list of all the Friday the 13th movies, I know my buddy Scruffy is going to be doing um, a list of that. I'll leave a link to his channel at the bottom uh, for this video so you can check it out and see all of his. But for me, I love the original. I don't care if it's not Jason and it's his mother. You gotta start somewhere, and this movie is just perfect. You, throughout the whole film, it, it just makes you feel like it's the camera who's killing people because they keep the identity hidden so well for a while until every now and then you see the legs, and you're like, it looks like it's a woman build, but at the same time, it might be a smaller man. You don't know. And then at the end, bow, you find out it's Mrs. Voorhees because she doesn't like the fact that nobody was there to help Jason or her special baby boy and all this stuff even though he was like a teenager I think or something like that it's, it's sad that he drowns but come on woman killing I mean it makes sense I mean you're, it's, it's your only child it's your baby he drowns so what's the most obvious thing to do with all your rage kill a bunch of counselors I mean I love the movie, but at the same time, it's like, really, lady? You really didn't have to do this. You could have just brought Jason back to life, and Jason could have been like, all right, I'm killing all the people that way. Then that would have been cool for, like, the first one, but they do that in the second one. But, I mean, or what it is involving the mother, and then the way they present the whole introducing the mom and how she's actually been the killer this whole time, and why it's called Lake Blood and all this, or Camp Blood, Camp or Lake Blood, or it could be Camp Lake Blood, for all I know. I'm trying to remember what that line that's in the first movie. They they say it's either they, this place is known as Camp Blood or Lake Blood. Sorry. My nose is a little shiny, I can tell, in the camera. Um, it's a lot of oil. But, um, hmm. It's a good movie. I mean, it's one of them ones that I always recommend because it's the original. I don't want to say don't watch the next parts. But that's just because I haven't seen all of them. And I've, if I have seen the other parts, it's because I've seen parts of them. Sounds <laughs> big, long list of like, what the heck? I've, I haven't seen all of them. I've only seen parts of them. And they're all the next continuing parts to the first Friday the 13th. Or at least there's a chunk of them. Because it goes uh, chapter, Friday the 13th, part two, part three. 
I think part four, and I think part five, and then the final chapter. And then that's when it goes into the whole list of other Friday the 13th movies that it's just like, whoa. But other than that, that is number six. So, yeah, from another 1980 film, from number five, The Shining. Now, I have seen The Shining. Uh, Richard, uh, Jack Nicholson and, I uh, forget her name, I always know her as Olive Oil from the live action Popeye movie with Robin Williams, may he rest in peace. Uh, I, I can't, I can never remember her name, I just know her as Olive Oil. But, great movie, um, kind of cringy, yes, but for a Stephen King film that's based off the book, failure, but as far as being a scary movie, nailed it. I mean, to me, that's why it's on my list, is because acting is great, and the freaking scare factor is still freaking there. If you want a movie that'll scare you during Halloween, watch it. Like my best, one of my best, one of my other favorite films of all time, uh, Ready Player One. They legit get to go into the movie and um, the big guy, H, even though it's, it's a woman who's that character, but it doesn't bother me. Um, she's like, is this movie scary? And the long, youngest kid there, he's like, I have to watch it in between my fingers because how scary it is. And then I just love it so much because the later lines, I'm pissed at you because you never seen The Shining. And then big, I'm just so, I can't scare scary movies. It makes me laugh. And that is another reason why Shining should be on here is because it is scary. I think I was young when I first seen it. I had to watch it in between my fingers too. And that's just from a nostalgia thing. <laughs> but other than that, when I got older, I kind of forgot about it. And then when people started mentioning Shining and then Red Rim, Red Rim, that's when I was just like, okay, I know what movie you're talking about. And I need to find it and I need to watch it again. I need to own it. But um, Shining is, that's why it's number five. It's because it's so scary. Acting is great. Stanley Kubrick did a great job of directing. Um, just the hotel, everything. I love it. I know it is inaccurate to the book a lot. But, come on, people, you can hate on the fact that it's not a Stephen King shining, but you can love it for the fact that it is scary. If you don't think it's scary, you can go kiss my ass, because I guess I'm just an easily scared person, maybe. I'm usually not. And this movie, if you're watching it and you're not expecting it at all and you've never seen The Shining, it scares the shit out of you. So, you know what? That's why it's number five for me. So, number four. 1984's Nightmare on Elm Street, the original Nightmare on Elm Street, just like Friday the 13th was the original Friday the 13th. I love the other next parts of Nightmare on Elm Street, but if you want to go best of the best, put it on a list, the original 84 Nightmare on Elm Street, starring uh, Johnny Depp, his uh, first opening role in a movie, because I think that's when he just either started or got off 21 Jump Street. That's right, there was a TV show, not not the Jonah Hill, Channing Tatum movie. There was a TV show, and it had Johnny Depp as being um, the main character with his partner, who were both also in the first 21 Jump Street movie, who were killed in the end because of how old they were, and they just wanted to. That's the way they wanted to end their characters, because Johnny Depp didn't want to keep playing his character from 21 Jump Street. He was like, the only way you can get me to do it is if you kill my character in the movie. So, I mean... That's That was his start, and then Nightmare on Elm Street, and then all the other movies to follow everybody. So I just love it because the fact that it's a character that we've never seen before in cinema until 84, and then right in 84, that's when everybody is, after 84 is done, that's when everybody's just sort of afraid to go to sleep because now they know that the character who can go into your dreams and kill you can kill you in real life. That is what I love about this because I, when I first seen it, I was actually afraid to go to sleep. I actually had nightmares about Freddy Krueger just raise her hand and just ugh, just thinking of it just all the dreams that I had that I had Freddy Krueger and it just scares the shit out of me because he gives you that factor if you watch this film and then you go and you try to go to sleep and you don't have a nightmare about it you're gold but if you do let me know what if over for personal friends and the next time I see you and you've seen this movie let me know what weird dreams you had that he popped in because I had a lot of weird ones and scary ones that was just like nope I'm done I'm not gonna go to sleep for a little bit I'm gonna do what I need to do to get me relaxed and just clear my head but anyway wow this is gonna be a long video everybody I'm so sorry about that but anyway so now I'll go to the next ones number three 1996's Scream that's right, the original Wes Craven Scream movie. 
Um, I love it so much uh, just because it's a throw. It's sort of a, to me, it feels like a throwback to all the slasher original slasher films because they always quote them in this movie and next. Um, like we all go a little crazy sometimes. Um, uh, Bates from Bates Motel. I forget his first name. I think it's. Um, No, we all go a little crazy sometimes. That's uh, Anthony Perkins' Psycho. See, I'm even starting to quote the film now. I had to re—I had to retake that. Uh, no, it was Norman Bates. Aha, there you go. But Norman Bates didn't say we all go a little crazy sometimes. Um, that was Anthony Perkins' Psycho. Um, anyway, a uh, great movie. Uh, I love the premise of it, the fact that these killers, because it is killers, it's not just a singular uh, serial killer, it's... A duo they initially sort of get the ideas from films and then a person helps them out and tells them how to do it because once you continue the lore of the, of the screen movies you find out that a guy originally taught the killers from screen to take their dreams to fruition which is take some of the things from horror films and bring it to real life and they did and the first scream they nailed it I love it. I even love the next ones after it. Only one that I'm still eh about is number four, and that's just because Emma Roberts. But that's another story for another time. <laughs> but I love the first Scream so much. The original, everybody first getting started with their own stuff. I'm all about actors getting their starts, and this one was a good one for a lot of the ones who were in it. And I just love it so much. And now, story of it basically, uh, it's a year anniversary after the main character's mother is dead. And then you find out the killers who killed her mom are back and they want to kill her. And they just go through a spree of killing other people before they get to her. But I think it's a couple of them are actually people who are close to her. The rest of them are just ordinary people that we all don't really know except for one of them. And that's uh, Henry Winkler as the principal. <laughs> the Fonz as the principal. That was so cool. I loved him. So sad and how he had to die. But hey. Yeah, somebody's got to die in a horror movie, and if it's going to be Henry Winkler, I guess it's got to be Henry Winkler, but I love the original Scream, so yeah, that was, it's good. So, uh, that was number three. Number two, one of my all-time favorites that is near and dear to my heart, same for number one. Number two is the original, um, what was the year? I want to say it. Uh, original 1981 American Werewolf in London. The original. I know there was one that was in the... There was another one that did it. If That might have been American Werewolf in Paris. But I know there was another American Werewolf in London that was uh, early 2000s. And now there's even going to be another remake. And I think they're bringing Rick Baker back, too. Or he's going to be the director. One of the two. They're either bringing him back for the makeup or he's directing and he's still going to be doing makeup. Either way, I freaking love Rick Baker. He's one of my favorite makeup artists for films. If I wanted to do a monster film, aside from one other artist that I don't want to say his name I would choose Rick Baker and that's just because he is the god that is horror I love him so much he's just cool inspiration I haven't done makeup myself but he's up there American Werewolf in London pretty simple straightforward I mean honestly you could probably get the story from the title alone it's an American Werewolf in London but he's not already a werewolf when he goes to London obviously him and his friend want to backpack, travel across London. Well, he does. His best friend would rather just stay home and be with a lady that he likes and just screw her because that's all he really wants is sex. He doesn't... <laughs> He's even telling his best friend this, who's the main character, that I, I'm just really just wanting sex with her. I don't want to... I, I'm loving our relationship, but I just want to have sex finally and all this other stuff. And then they go to this bar and they find out in the local area at this bar where they're at, it is known... For a werewolf being around almost 24-7, because you see a protecting symbol on there. It was actually insignia. Uh, it was the five, five-pointed five star. It wasn't the upside-down one, which means Satan. It was the upside one, which is protection against evil. And if you do use it in spells, it is still a protective one. I only know this because of research and other stuff that I've watched. But if it is upside-down, that is when you're fully... Like, Satan. So... <laughs> In their bar, they had the upside pentagram. There we go, pentagram. And candles lit. And one, the best friend to the main character is doing a very bad joke. 
about the star, and then he finally asks everyone, what's that star about? And that's when everybody in the bar kicks him out. But they remember they need to stay on the roads, and just basically just stay on the roads. And what happens? They don't stay on the road because of how bad the rain is, and they just feel like just getting off the road. And next thing you know, when the rain finally gets to stop, but it's still cold as hell, where we'll find some starts circulating them. That's which which is really cool. They throw in that feature of both the guys standing in the middle of the forest or woods, or well, basically an open field really that does have trees here and there. It's not a big huge forest like I thought it would be. And then you see the camera just doing the circle pattern that they do with tracks and stuff for filming. And you see the actors every now and then flip their bodies, but it's more the camera just circulating their whole body, which is mimicking the real wolf circulating around them, which is so cool. And I love how they do that. And then the next thing you know, they both finally see it face to face. We don't see it. We never see the werewolf until at the very end in the Triple uh, X movie theater. And what I mean by Triple X, I'm not talking about Xander Cage or Vin Diesel's Triple X. I'm talking about a porno. It's a porno theater. That's what I probably should have said right there, but I didn't want to. But that's when we actually finally see the full werewolf. Actually, no, we see a little glimpse of it and a pretty good big glimpse of it when he's attacking a person underneath in the railways, rail, railways with their transit units and everything of a business guy. But such a great movie. I love it so much. There's a lot of comedy uh, just and also very crude comedy, and that's why I love it so much. Horror and just blood and guts just big in this film and I love it so much I'm just a near and dear hearted person with werewolves in general I, I like vampires but it's starting to get to the point where vampire and I'm kind of with my best friend um, we've you've seen him and I've done a co co collab video with a handicapped kid I'm with him and certain chunks of years um, it's werewolves another year vampires another year whatever else and then it goes back and forth back and forth it's been at a point where we've just been nothing but vampires i love vampires i still want to do stuff with vampires for my own personal projects as well but werewolves need love everybody and that's why i am putting american werewolf london in number two that is just one of my favorite 80s films and just just not really scary movies but if you want to go into a factor of halloween and it's a monster flick and that's why it's number two. So number one. This is a big one, everybody. And it's kind of funny that I picked this one for number one since it is a Halloween special. I'm doing 1978's John Carpenter's Halloween. The very first and original Halloween, everybody. I am choosing this one because it's just the best of the best. I mean, what can you ask for? You get a little comedy, but it's more scary, more thrilling, more just oh, at the edge of your seat and just scaring the shit out of you. There's not as many kills as there is in other Halloween films or even the newest one from what I've heard about. There's there's a big list of killings in this and one of them is a kid in the new one. For those of you who haven't seen the new one, I'm sorry I just gave away the kill list and then the fact that one of them is a kid. Sorry, but at the same time, movie's been out for a week. I probably should have seen it by now, but I haven't yet. I plan on trying to before it gets out of theaters if i don't say when it gets out of theaters i'll just wait to see it and that's when i'll do the review for it better late than never as i always say and there'll probably be more reviews here soon with all the movies that's over here and probably even the movies that's back over there or even down here that's right i have too many movies ladies and gentlemen i'm building my collection more and more if not every day every year so 1978's john carpenter's halloween it is a story of a psycho I mean, of a, not, a, not a psychopath, of a serial killer named Mike Myers. But he's not really a serial killer uh, yet. When he is a little kid on Halloween, I forget the year that they say it is when he's a little kid. But you see him in a clown costume, clown mask. That's where it all started with the mask and having a knife. He sees his babysitter and he sees the man that he that she is with. He grabs his puts down his clown mask or i think if he's not already wearing it goes to the kitchen grabs the kitchen butcher knife and he kills his babysitter and her boyfriend and i believe that's also when he kills his mom too okay so in that sense if you want to do if you want to do serial killer i guess you could but it's more of a multiple murderer and then he goes into the psych ward 
and he stays there for many years until one year in 1978. He decides he needs to go after his sister, Lori Strode, which is actually Lori Myers. I believe that's her first name, too. I think they kept the first name. Did they? Now you're making me think about this. I hate it. But Lori Strode. Um, she's just a normal, typical high school student going to high school. I believe she is a junior. She's babysitting. She's doing a lot of things with her friends. She's driving around with her main best friend, her other best friend, off doing what she wants to do because she's a cheerleader and her boyfriend picks her up and all that. And then they go off and they start doing their babysitting around. Every now and then she sees glimpses of this guy who's in a mask, which is Michael. He breaks out from, um, the psych ward during the time when they were supposed to transfer him to another psych ward and that's when shit goes crazy and off the rails they he takes the car and he's going off into town and then when he's off into town he has his mask he has a jumpsuit overalls and uses i think a couple of different weapons i know he uses his hands i think he uses a string and then that's when he just gets into the knife and all the killings he did in this film isn't as much as he does in the new one. But that's when it finally gets to a point where it's like, all right, you're a serial killer. He kills a lot of people in this film. I don't think he kills a kid in the original 78 film. Hmm. No. He doesn't. There's moments where you think he might, but he doesn't. And then at the end, great ending and how they end the first Halloween film. And next thing you know... He's gone, and it leads up to the point where it's like, all right, we got to do another one. And they do. They've made Halloween films for a lot of years. Obviously, as you can tell, because number one that's on my list is 78's original. So that's why everyone's making a cool big deal about the new Halloween film, because it's direct sequel to Laurel Stro- St- Laurie Strode from 1978 to, th- to 2018. And that is why I love that they did that in this film. I'm happy that Jamie Lee Curtis is back. Jamie Lee Curtis is an amazing actress. She did great in the original film. It's amazing. It's happy to see why she got this film when she was younger. Scream queen of all time. I love her scream too when she's just scared. Because you need, as much as I hate to have a woman scream, in a horror movie, you need that scream factor, that other factor of, okay, I'm scared, but I'm going to need to be more scared, and that's when you have a woman just go off the rails and just do her acting best, and she just belts. If you can't get that in a film during that is supposed to be a scary film, to me, you failed. You need to have that one screen. I don't care where it is. I don't care if it's even a, if it's even a girl. It could even be a dude who has that weird high-pitched register and screams like a little girl. If you do that, to me, it'll just make me laugh. But you've got the one girl scream in the film. So, I mean, you just got to have it. And that is why, to me, personally, 1978's Halloween is at the top of my list. You have the original actress who is so good at doing what she's doing with this craft and how much she has done it over the years and how much she has grown. Even though this was her first film, she had the amazing scream factor of being the scream queen. And they even did a game... They even did a type of game show called Scream Queens where they of who could be in the show and she was a host or a judge or something like that because she's the original Scream Queen and they did that. I like that they did that. Uh, it was a thing on Fox, I believe. I never watched it because I was just like, meh. But um, I like that they did that and she was a part of it. It's because she's the all-time and she's the original. Yes, there's been horror movies and other times before that. But Jamie Lee Curtis is and always will be the Scream Queen. And that is why I love Halloween 1978. It is a good movie. I don't want to talk more about it. I'm happy with all the top tens that I've talked about. I have gone this, let this video go on for too long so far. I am happy for those of you who went all the way to number one. Sorry for all the extra little sidetracks. I get excited when I'm talking about other films and the fact that other films they've done and everything, which is why I'm happy I didn't with Jamie Lee. So... If you liked 10 from 1, let me know down in the comments below. If you want to take out movies and put in your own, go ahead as well. I am not going to stop you. It is your own choice and your own opinion, just like this. This is my opinion. So anyway, just hit that like uh, like button. 
let a comment down below, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I don't know what I'm going to do next for you guys, but it'll be good. I'm pretty sure it'll probably be another review. I haven't been able to start my video project yet, but when I do, you guys are going to enjoy it when you guys see it. So other than that, guys, I am Parzival, and I will see all of you beautiful, fabulous nerds in the next video.